Yeah, good morning.
Hi, good morning. Tommy, well, hi, good morning. Hi, morning, Uche. How are you? Can you hear me? I'm, I'm doing great. I can hear you very well. Excellent. Are we using video or is it just voice? Um, so we can do both. Um, we can do video. Okay. If it works for you. Okay, cool. Okay. So I've set up my video. Can you see me? Yes, I can. I can see you. Okay. All right. Hey. Great. Well done. Um, I tried to share. Okay, so. Yeah. yeah, I saw a couple of questions. Yeah, you saw the questions I sent, just two of them. You saw the questions I sent. Um, so I said that again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw the questions. Yes, I did. Okay. I said, did you so, see the question I sent to you? Yes, I did. Do I think startups get enough media coverage? Mm -hmm. Considering that journalists are in the hunt for content, what do you think is the way for startups to explore this to get their message? Yeah, so, so we can, yeah, so we can continue the conversation from there. Okay, no problem. Okay, so um, first, first off, I'd like to, I'd like to thank you for accepting to come on this. Um, um, we would like to also thank um, our partners that help us make this possible. Um, Yadel Media. Um, you know Yadel Media, I guess? Yeah. That um, the PR, PR and marketing agency that's focused on tech. They've had some they, they, they represent some of the popular tech startups we know, um, Hotels at NG, um, Contivo, and most of the EcoVC portfolio companies, they work for them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so yadelmedia.com. Um, so, you know, looking at the conversation we started having over in Lagos, um, so I thought that um, is, is, is a conversation that I think that a number of people in our community need to, need to have and understand. Um, you know, media is, promotion is an important um, part, part of, um, media is an important part of promotion. Um, you know, you know, so there are, there are, but it turns out that a lot of startups don't understand. A lot of startups don't understand what it takes to you know, have press coverage. Um, and, I'm, and I'm thinking, if they understand what it is, maybe a lot may be easier. Sometimes it's I don't know, you are the media person, so we're gonna have this conversation and we understand, is it about budget? Um, is it about budget? Are there ways startups can do this for almost less to nothing? What are those other those ways? So that's essentially why we're having this conversation. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, so I'll start off by asking you a question. Do, do you think that startups in Nigeria get enough media coverage? So I'm going to give an answer that I don't know if it's the one you were expecting. Okay. But I think, yes. In fact, I think some of our startups probably get too much media coverage. Mm -hmm. um, we're a pretty young ecosystem. Um, and we're in a country where there's um, a fair amount of unemployment, where not many industries are doing that well. And I think there's been a pretty heavy emphasis on the technology industry as mm -hmm. sort of a panacea for those uh, challenges and those issues. Um, I also think that sometimes rushes uh, causes our media and international media to, to rush their coverage of the startup scene a little bit and to be a little bit less critical than is required. Um, I think it's fantastic that the tech industry is um, 
doing such interesting things and is drawing investment and is drawing attention globally. But I do think it's critical that we make sure that we aren't hyping things before they actually matter, before um, the companies are doing work that actually matters and are achieving meaningful milestones. And so I think um, sometimes we are getting some unquestioning as a press coverage and we would be best off with a bit more of a critical eye. Um, that being said, that doesn't mean that your individual startup um, you know, does not deserve to have its story told. Um, if it is doing something that matters, you know, if it has achieved a milestone that matters. Um, and yes, getting media coverage is definitely a critical part. Awesome. So, so to tell me, we're going uh, to back. We're you know, going to back promoting to yourself and achieving the next goal or the next milestone. Great, great. So, Tommy, we're going to backtrack a little. You know, we started off without really talking talking about you, so that so that the people listening will be able to know who they are talking with. So, um, so we have Tommy Tommy Wa Alanekomo um, online, and Tommy Tommy is going to tell us a little bit of, a little bit more about himself. So, Tommy, can you share a little bit more about yourself before we continue? Okay, all right. So, first thing, it's not Tommy. It's Tommy Wa. Tommy Wa. I have a, it's Tommy. So you have, <laughs> so, a, you have a sister that is known Tommy, right? Yes. yes. I know. So, my name, so my name is Tommy Wa Aladikomo, and I'm the CEO of Big Kabao Media. We publish Tech Kabao, uh, which is a technology publication that aims to give insight into what's happening across the continent in the technology space, uh, in the technology and innovation space. Um, we also publish Zikoko, which is a youth-focused publication uh, where we do a great amount of content that's super interesting and that attempts to sort of capture what it's like to be a young person in Nigeria, the concerns of young people in sort of a fun, vibrant, uh, and engaging way. Um, so they're both platforms, uh, both great platforms, and we're really proud of them and the work that they're doing. Uh, Techkabao is at techkabao.com. Zikoko is at zikoko, that's Z-I-K-O-K-O.com. Um, and we also have YouTube channels and social channels for both of them. Um, well worth checking out. Uh, my background is yeah. across media and marketing. Um, I went to school in the US and started out. Um, I worked in advertising, I worked for record labels, um, and I've been back in Nigeria for about 11 years, working across the entire media landscape. And so um, I did my youth service with This Day, the newspaper. I've worked in events. Um, I've been head of digital for Nigerian breweries. Um, I've been part of a small media company called Venture Media that helps The Guardian Nigeria build out their digital platform, everything from building out their website to monetization. And uh, last year, I joined the Big Cabal team as CEO of uh, Big Cabal Media. Um, and in the time I've been there, we've uh, done quite a bit of work on both platforms. Um, and uh, I'm trying to do interesting work um, in terms of covering startups, covering culture, um, we also have a unit called Cabal Creative, which does work with brands and uh, all kinds of clients. Um, but yeah, that's, I think, my background in, in short. Awesome. Awesome. Um, what, the, what is the, um, what would you say is the goal for Big Cabal? Um, I think you said that the last time we spoke, and I, I, I think it bears repeating. What do you think is the, what's the goal for Big Cabal? What do you say it's going? So we're creating the media brands of the future. Uh, Africa's uh, most important media brands um, of the future. That's, uh, that's our sense, that's our mission. Is our sense is that um, there aren't enough brands, uh, media houses that are creating content uh, by Africans, for Africans and, and for a global audience. Um, I think that's key, is that we want content of a quality and of an informativeness that um, the entire world will engage with. And so fundamentally that's our goal is to create um, media brands and media content um, of global standard quality um, that will serve Africans on the continent and off the continent and that will serve uh, global audiences. Awesome. That, that's what we wake up and do every day. Awesome. So let's let's um, journalist. Let's so, so so back to our conversation, right? Yeah. Journalists generally um, always in the hunt for 
content. Um, yeah. yeah what, what would you think is the way for startups to explore this content? You know, I asked you earlier if they, if they get enough, um, if they get enough coverage. You said yes, and um, we would want for startups to for us to hype things that are ready, so that we don't have things before they are ready. You know, but there are, you know, it's like the the chicken and egg stuff, right? What needs to happen? Startups need to get promote. They need to get some level of visibility to be able to grow, and at the same time, um, they need to be able to um, have quality stuff. But quality stuff comes from yeah, the the patronage they're able to get, right? The ability to grow and have resources to continue to grow comes from the patronage that they get. And yeah. patronage comes from the level of exposure and promotion they're able to get, right? So it turns out like a conundrum of some sort. Okay. So, I mean, that's an interesting perspective to it. And um, it sort of speaks to what are your goals? And so... Um, for startups that are looking for attention, um, you have to define what your objectives are. And so if growing your visibility within your target audience, um, the, people, the audience that is going to buy your products is your goal, then that leads you to one set of media platforms. If um, raising your visibility within the tech community because you're looking for partners or strategic partners or distribution partners is one thing. It leads you to a different set of, set of media partners. If reaching VCs because you're looking for investment is your goal, then it leads you to a different set of media platforms. So the last time we spoke, I mean, I talked about, well, you know, would a startup be looking for a local media outlet or are they looking for international media outlets? And that has an effect on what sort of approach you take to your marketing now, or your, to your media engagement. So if you're a small startup um, based in Worry or based in Enugu and you're looking to grow the audience for your product, which is serving a local audience, um, then you're going to be looking at local media platforms. And it might mean that you're not actually looking at technology-focused media platforms because whatever your product is, it isn't targeted at technology audiences necessarily. It might be targeted at, you know, a broad audience that is looking for a way to make their shopping easier. In which case, pressing the technology space is pleasant and is nice and is validation that you're doing something that is interesting, but it doesn't actually help you accomplish whatever your business objectives at the time are. Um, over time, and I, 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 my sense is I, tend, I see startups tend to want validation in the, press, in the tech space because, you know, it tells you that you're part of the community, you know, you're doing something interesting. Um, but without a product that is working, that is reaching customers, that is doing something interesting, then the interest of the tech press in covering you is fairly limited. And so when we're trying to cover a... Uh, a new startup, there are a few questions that, that make them interesting in the tech space. And um, sometimes it's the who. So if it's somebody who's done something interesting previously, uh, sometimes it's the product. Is the product new and interesting or is it engaging? Is it novel? Is it solving a critical problem in a way that nobody else has solved it? So uh, that's the tech community. Uh, that's tech press thinking here. Um, who is it serving? Is it serving an underserved audience um, in a way that they haven't been served before? And why is this product different from everything else that is out there? Or why is this team that is creating this product different from everything that is out there? Um, finally, how much traction do they have? You know, um, do they have 10,000 uh, users? Do they have, you know, monthly revenues that are significant or that are impressive given the stage of their business? Um, if you're pitching the tech, uh, tech reporter, those are the kind of questions that you're going to get. However, uh, before you get to that stage, perhaps what you're trying to do is you're trying to um, get attention to your product so that people will come and buy it. And so if, for instance, you know, 
you've created a new web platform that is serving fresh juice to local audiences um, in a way that they haven't received it before, or uh, it's completely fresh, it comes quickly, then what you might want to be doing is targeting local media um, and trying to get them to cover this incredible convenience for their environment. In which case, you're not looking for tech cabal or you know, whoever else to cover you. What you're looking for is your local newspaper. And the person that you're looking for is maybe the lifestyle editor. And you want to send them you know, a little bit of a story about this incredible product um, that is so good and so interesting and that they should talk about because it's something that's different that somebody, um, and the who for them might be, oh, this is a young person doing this in their area. And that might be what is interesting to them. Uh, um, so whoever, you need to know what is important to them. Um, yeah. I will pause there. <laughs> oh, oh, nice. Uh, so, so you've answered most of the questions I will ask you, right? So, my, my, okay. but let me let me ask this: um, At what point should the startups begin to cultivate relationship with the media? I think they should start fairly early, but um, I guess two steps to that: one, define your objectives. Um, and then two, ensure that you have an interesting story. So when you define your objectives, it lets you know who to target. So like I said, your first goal might be targeting press in order to build your audience. Um, in which case you pick the relevant uh, publications. And um, I'll give a, a bit of a how-to. When you're targeting the press, you don't want to blanket everybody with the same message. I think what most people do is they write a press release and then they send it to every newspaper and every publication that they've ever heard of. Um, that's guaranteed to get you no attention and an immediate conscription to the spam bin. What you want to do is you want to be as specific as possible to what your objectives are at the time and to what the publications that would be interested in what the story you're telling is at that time. So if you're trying to grow audience, and it's a local audience, then you want to pick five publications or three to five publications that serve the audience that you're trying to reach. And you want to create a story that is interesting for those people. Again, that might be because of who you are, a particularly young person doing something interesting, um, a product that they will find compelling. You want to write something short but interesting that those publications will find valuable. An additional tip, you want to find the people at those publications who are particularly interested in your story. So for instance, if it is a juice product, you want to find the lifestyle editor. If it's a fashion product, you want to find the fashion editor. If it is very, very tech specific, then you want to find the tech editor. And you want to see sometimes there'll be two or three people, uh, two or three reporters who cover the tech beat or who cover the lifestyle beat. Um, it's useful to find the ones who are written stories about platforms like yours or startups like yours, as well as their editor. And so if you pick, say, The Guardian, and you send it to the lifestyle editor and the reporter who also covers the lifestyle beat, you're more likely to get a good reception because they know that they're interested in these kind of stories. And you see the kind of angles that they usually like take their things from, and you pitch it from that angle. Now, as you grow as a startup, and you're looking for funding or strategic partners in the tech space, you might want to engage very specifically the tech press. Now, the key things there are A, to find the publications that cover the kind of startup that you are, uh, B, to find the people within those publications that are writing stories about startups like yours, um, and C, to make sure that you have a story that's going to be engaging for them. And so you don't start with, well, my founder and I met each other five years ago, and we started working together. You start with, this is what we're offering. This is who we are offering it to. This is why it is distinct and interesting to your audience. And you find the person at that publication who is going to be interested in this story. And you can do that by just reading through the articles in the publication and seeing which ones you know, 
are close to the kind of work that you do or are close to the kind of startup that you do. Um, but you can start this fairly early in your journey as a company. Uh, one of the things I find useful is to keep the people that I want to be engaged with me regularly updated about what it is that we're doing. And so once a month or once a quarter, you send them an email and you say, writing as a human being to another human being, not as a spammer to a list of spammies. Uh, Hi, Uche of Tech Cabal. I know that you write stories about you know, startups doing interesting things in the machine learning space. My partners and I have started a machine learning company that is cataloging every plant in Enugu and, um, you know, so that uh, we can create medicines and products super easily. And we've raised this much money, uh, we've built an MVP, and our MVP is really interesting. If you like, we can do a short call so that we can show you our MVP in action. Um, and they may bite, or they may not bite. And if they don't bite, a month later, or three months later, you say, hi, Uche. We sent you an email three months ago about our machine learning startup, um, which is cataloging plants. Um, since that time, we have come x way. We have cataloged 200 more plants, and we have formed a partnership with a pharmaceutical company that wants to understand more about plants. Uh, we're making progress, and if you're interested, we can tell you a little bit more. And they may bite, or they may not bite. But a month later, you send them another update, and you say, since the last time we emailed you, here's how far we have come. And as long as you keep making real progress as a startup, as long as you keep doing interesting things, um, as long as your story is engaging, then eventually some of these people will bite. They will say, actually, this thing sounds interesting. These people are clearly doing something. I can see them making progress. This thing is worth talking about. Um, and sometimes the most interesting part of your story isn't necessarily just what you're doing. Maybe it's that you're part of a community. And so you're like, we are one of five machine learning startups in Enugu. And the reporter is going to go, there are five machine learning startups in Enugu. That's a story I should cover. So you have to find the angle that is interesting and that is unusual for a reporter or for any kind of publisher to engage with. And then you just want to keep sending them interesting information over time. And if you pick two or three or four publications that are interested in your space and that would be interesting, and you engage with them on an ongoing basis, then there's an opportunity that you will find an audience for your story and that they will help you find a bigger audience over time. Nice. Thank you. Um, so at this point, I'd just like to mention um, that um, we're having this because we have support from Yadel Communications, yadelmedia.com. And of course, we're talking to um, Tomiwa Kumo, who is the CEO of Big Cabal. Um, Big Cabal is the publishers of um, Ed Cabal, Sikoko, and then um, Delhi. Um, and Tomiwa comes with a background from um, a journalistic background from The Guardian, Y Niger, and I mean, so we've been exploring, yeah, so we've been exploring um, how startups can leverage the media, the press, you know, um, to promote what they do. And he's been telling us, he's given a lot, a lot of tips. At this point, we have, if you have question for him, you can actually just um, raise your hand. Um, and, and I will let you ask the question. Um, I can see that Jonah Solomon from Yadel Communications is here. Um, Jehu is here, John Abba is here. I know that um, Namdi is here, and then I have John. Okay, so if any of you have questions, you can raise, signify by raising your hand, and I can let you ask the question. Um, tell me what, back to you, I'd like to ask you, what, what, what is the, can you share an example of one of the best speeches you've gotten as a journalist? Can you think of one? Interesting. 
So uh, I will be clear, I, I will be honest and admit that I'm mostly on the business side of this, um, rather than on the um, journalism side. Um, yeah. I run a media business, but I tend to be on the business side. Um, but what are the pitches that we've received that we think are interesting? Um, you're going to have to give me a moment to think about it. Mm. Um, I think generally they've been people who are doing work that is interesting and can show that they've made a bit of progress on that work. Um, like I said at the beginning, I think too many startups aim for publicity before they can actually show any substance. And so you want to validate your idea and make sure it actually is interesting, it actually is unique in some way. Um, before you reach out to us and you want to make sure that you can show us that some of the work you're doing is some kind of impact or is drawing some kind of an audience um, or has some kind of real potential um, before you reach out to us. The most interesting pitches that we've received uh, I think have had those sort of um, uh, those, those features to them. Um, I also think, in, for instance, when we were doing our health tech um, report, um, we spoke to a number of startups in that space. And I think the ones that were most interesting to us were the ones who seemed to be solving problems in, in the real world, in, in problems that weren't just, you know, an app for the sake of an app, um, that solved uniquely Nigerian problems in interesting ways, that use technology and interesting ways to solve you know, existing challenges. Yes. Thank you, thank you, Tomiwa. Um, as a recap, I, I, I like to just um, know, just recap what you said um, prior. Um, startups should be able to have an objective. They should be able to know what it is they're looking for um, in terms of their direction, and then they should be able to look out for media that. Um, media that are interested in those spaces um, yeah. and, and then I've tried to make a try to establish con contact as early as possible um, so I don't know how pissed, you know some journalists um, some media people can be when somebody's trying to cut you at the verge of them needing to promote something I mean is that an experience you've had um, so, I think it's important to note that while it's the media's uh, responsibility to cover startups, uh, or the tech media's responsibility to cover startups, um, it's hard to demand that you be covered. And um, as human beings, we're not objective about, it's rare for us to be objective about our own work or our own company. Um, we tend to be very sure we're doing the most interesting work in the world. Uh, and it's the editor's job to filter that, and so, or the writer's job to filter that. So they receive a lot of pitches, uh, they receive, you know, a lot of people looking for engagement, and they will engage or not engage given what their mandate is um, as a publication, given their judgment about what is interesting or not interesting about your startup. And so I, I think persistence is key, but it's a polite persistence. And it's why I've suggested that you want to start engaging, not as early as possible, but as early as you have something interesting to share with them. And you want to do that persistently but politely. So checking in semi-regularly with here's what is interesting about us, here's what progress we have made, here's what has happened since the last time that we spoke. Um, and like I said, um, because they are busy, whether writers or editors may not always engage Know, immediately but um, it's um, I think with persistence and with a really interesting story in time you will find uh, some people to engage um, I'd also say along with persistence uh, spread the love a little bit um, so you want to reach out to I would never target to just one publication um, I make a list of three to five publications that matter find the right people at those three to five and if you're sending three to five people an email on a monthly basis or a quarterly basis about what it is that's happening, 
um, and why you're interesting, and you're finding the person who's beat, it makes the most sense for, eventually some or all of them will bite. And sometimes you just need the one person to bite. If one person writes a great story about you, it will frequently open the gates to other people paying attention. To yeah, you. yeah, so exactly. So because I've had some experience where I had sent, um, I sent some PR press release to some, to a couple of journalists and then um, nobody used it. And then, and then a, foreign, a foreign media picks it up and publishes it. And then suddenly all the local media starts, starts publishing that PR. Yeah, um, that definitely happens. And that's not something that I think as media people we should be proud of. Uh, but there definitely is a small copycat industry where once it's live, then everybody follows it. But um, I'm not a big fan of press releases um, mm -hmm. in that form, I must say. Um, whenever, even internally, we create a press release, we tend to then use it just as a template, as an internal template. But then we start thinking about who the people are that we want to engage. And you need to customize it for each of those people that the message you're sending to them attacks it from an angle that's interesting to them. But I think if you blanket, you know, if you BCC 20 media publications with a press release, the likelihood of success is uh, fairly limited. Awesome. So, so, so um, get as close, as personal as you can get when you have a press release. Try to pitch it from the angles that you know that the journalist will be interested in. Yes. Awesome. Tommy, I can't thank you enough for coming on this. Um, I wouldn't know if anybody has any question. If not, okay, so John has a question. Um, I think you mentioned that there's a raise hand button. Yeah, but well, well, yeah, he already indicated. So I'm going to. Yeah. So John, I'm going to unmute you. I hope I'm unmuting the correct person. Oh no, John. John, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, great. Okay, can you hear me? Very well. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, good day, anyone. Okay, I'm John Abbas. Okay. I'm the co-founder of Fire Lab and ICT. What we do, we partner with school to, to provide the kids for the digital workforce for the future, prepare them for the future. So my question is this, like most people in the active part of the country, especially my ICT lab, so we find it difficult to be able to get media coverage for most of the things we do. So how, how do we be able to, so most of the media companies are there in Lagos, and no, I don't think most of you have any respondent there in the south or maybe this part of the country. So how do we can be able to get our stories across of the things we are doing? So I think, um, like I mentioned, so what's interesting, I think, You'll find that Lagos media publications are actually interested in writing about things happening outside of Lagos. I think from a resource perspective, we don't necessarily all have the resources to send people all over the country or all over the continent, as the case may be, to the places where everything is happening. So I think what's critical is if you're doing things that are interesting, um, and it requires a little bit of homework, but that's why I think it's best to make a short list rather than a big list of companies that you are interested, uh, media houses that you're interested in having covering you. Because if you make a short list, you can then do your homework on those publications. Who is writing the most interesting stories or who's writing stories about things like what you do um, at those publications? You can follow them on Twitter, you can go to the website and see where their email addresses are. Um, if you go to something like techcabal.com, um, on our about page, you know, there's the editor's address in there. And if you send on a regular basis the things that are happening, and if they are interesting, I, I must say they have to be interesting, but if they are interesting, I think you'll find that we are willing to cover them because it's not our aim to cover the Lagos tech ecosystem. It's our aim to cover the African tech ecosystem. So when we receive 
happening in Kaduna, we want to cover it. When we receive interesting things happening in uh, Cairo, we want to cover them. When we see interesting things happening in Kigali, we want to co cover them. So I think if the stuff you're doing is interesting, I mean, we're always looking, uh, but we welcome you know, interesting pitches as well, and we will engage with them as best as we can. Great. Any other person have a question? Do you have, you know, there's a hand, there's a hand icon somewhere. Um, if you have a question, you should be able to, you should be able to ask. Otherwise, we would round up and let Tommy Wa go back to his job. Okay. I think if you click on the participants on the Zoom, there's a raise hand icon there. Yeah. Yeah. In the front, yeah, you have a question. No, I don't have any question. I just I don't know what that transpired. Do you have a did you say you have a question? No, I don't. I just don't. I don't okay. Okay, so it might be, it might it might be it might be good for you to introduce yourself and introduce what your company does. Okay, so my name is Gifreke Ikoku. I I run a startup called House Africa as a co-founder. What we do is hello, can you hear me? Go ahead. Yes. Okay. I want to start a call house Africa. What we do is help people own shares in multiple products across uh, Nigeria. So we make it easy for people to enter into investment business and then um, we can have investment over the pool. Could be rental, could be properties for sale. Whatever the terms is, we always define that and we allow investors to participate. Okay. Yeah, that's what I do. All right, great. Okay. All right, so if there's no other questions, Jonah, okay, Jonah wants to say something. Jonah, go on. Jonah, go on. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Good Hi, afternoon, Jonah. Jonah. Hey, thank you so much for arranging this. Uh, and thank you, Tommy Wang, for your time. Uh, we had engaged sometime uh, when I did something for Movie Hunter. Uh, but you, we didn't see each other. We spoke on phone. I'm not sure if you're able to remember. But this is the first time I'm placing your face to your name. OK. Great to see you here. Thank you. Great to be okay, here. OK, so I enjoyed everything uh, you said here. You are quite relevant. Um, I'm sure that uh, if most startups know how relevant uh, trying to engage uh, the media on their own is, they would all be here trying to hear from you, or even try to, you know, arrange for a launch with you so that you can. You, you see, uh, um, I've been on the both sides myself. Uh, I I I was covering startups back in Vanguard, and I was always writing on startups. That was where EJ met me uh, on Facebook. And then just what he said, he said, I, I realized you're always writing about startups. And then he chatted me up and from there, this is how where we are today. Um, um, I think that most startups, uh, I don't know the perception they have about the media, but if you take your time to, to learn how to to interact with the media, to talk to journalists, to be media literate, make friends with reporters, to attend events, all these tech events, there will be tech point inspired tomorrow. Hundreds of journalists will be there. How many of the startups will seek out to one journalist and sit down with him and, you know, teach your story to him? That's yeah. how it all starts. I know, I know some, some startup founders who who built their companies with funding. They never spent a dime on media, on press. They made friends with those journalists. They pitched their stories to as many of them that were willing to listen. Eventually, they get featured most of the time. They, they became 
uh, the toast of the press. That is how it all starts. So most times, most uh, startups don't have the patience. They don't have the, I would say, they don't have patience on one hand. On the other, they don't have the courage to go and meet the journalists and talk to them about what they are doing. So they just wait when they have the money. They approach a PR agency and say, write a press release for me. I will pay for it. It doesn't work like that. It's not, it's, you are hardly going to make impacts if you go through that route. The best impact is trying to engage those journalists yourself. Tell your own story. So that when you are eventually hiring a PR company, you exactly know where you are working with them. So I work with great startups who are already who already raised funding. They are doing fantastic. They are no longer, they are almost existing, existing the startup phase. And it's easier to work with them because of their level of understanding with how the press works. So it's always easier to achieve results that way. So I think you can do a course, an online course entirely on how to engage the press to achieve the optimum utility based off of this um, arrangement alone. And it will be something that every startup in this country will be able to leverage to grow their company. I appreciate your effort, I appreciate your time. And thank you so much. If it's thank possible you. to have a second version of this, why not? Uh, we would be able to make it happen as well. Thank awesome. you so much. Awesome, Jonah, thank you very much. Um, are there courses, um, Tommy, what do you know if there are courses on first relations on um, Udemy or Coursera or any I'm of those? Huh? I haven't checked any recently, but I'm pretty certain that there are and it'd be worth it. I mean, again, you start, you spend some time on the internet looking at any uh, sort of any platforms um, that think intelligently about this stuff and you can, I'm sure you can find so much. But I, I want to say thank you, John. I actually do, I think you touched on a number of things that were important that I hadn't necessarily talked about. Um, some of that's attending the right events and looking for people in the media at those. I think particularly important uh, today is follow the reporters on social media. You know, so find the reporters that are interested in your space and find out what the platforms that they usually engage with are. A lot of them are on Twitter. Uh, some of them prefer to engage on LinkedIn. Some of them prefer to engage on Instagram, but I find Twitter the most useful platform. Um, and it's a useful place to get a sense of what they find interesting, which, you know, what uh, kind of stories they themselves are looking at. And it's a great place to start engagement with them. And so um, if you're doing anything interesting and you are able to engage with them on those platforms in a one-on-one -on -one manner, I think it's a great place and a great way to start a conversation with a journalist that will eventually lead into, you know, uh, you having real coverage and real engagement with those, with those platforms. Awesome. Awesome. Super, super. Thank you so much, um, Tomiwa. I truly appreciate this. And I, I, I hope, I hope, I hope that you, you would make time to be, be a startup South 5, you know, um, I know I haven't spoken to you about it yet, but okay. No, I mentioned it to you when we met at um, the once event. Yeah, I'm not sure you remember. Yeah. So, so, so startup South 5 comes up in Oyo from October 29th to November 2nd. Um, we have over 60, over 60 sessions already um, in four days. So um, it's going to be, it's, it's going to be very, very heavy. Um, already, it's, already it's the biggest, it's the biggest startup and entrepreneurship conference in the whole of the South, South and the Southeast. Um, one, that, one that people look up to every year. And we want to continue to, to, grow, that, to grow that platform and make it interesting and make it a place where startups would be able to meet, with, um, meet and connect with interesting, interesting people and resources, especially like media people, investors, you know, possibly partners. You know, we want to continue to make it and, you know, to grow that platform that way. So I hope you attend. Jonah is coming. Um, um, Okay, for the first time, I'm going to announce this publicly. So, um, Madam Funke Obeke is, 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 is our keynote speaker. And 
and we're expecting. Fantastic. Yeah, so, Madam. Congratulations. Madam, yeah, thank you. So, and um, we're expecting about four governors. Um, we're going to have a special governors, governors panel session um, on, at the conference. So, and our, our focus this year is on uh, making broadband accessible and affordable in the region. Okay, so trying to draw up a collaborative, um, um, try to build up a collaborative approach to making broadband accessible and affordable in the region. So that's what we're focusing on this year. And of course, it's also going to feature a trademark um, startup bootcamp, you know, um, where we get startups to, to pitch. Um, it's not, most times it's not necessarily about how much they get for pitching. It, it's about the exposure. Hopefully this year's, this year's pitch is going to be on live TV. Um, that's part of the plan. And um, then again, um, we, the South South East Angel Network, which I'm part of, is converting that boot camp as part of their as their second due day. We just finished the first due day last week, Saturday. So the second due day is going to be that um, they're going to be using the boot camp and that pitch as their second due day. And what it means is that there's a guaranteed investment for the startups that come through that boot camp, obviously. So that's what, that's what it means, actually. Um, you know, so, so, so much, so much, so much to do at the conference. So, um, we'll start making the announcements in, in a couple of in a couple of days. Excellent, sounds good. It sounds very exciting, and I'm sure it will be a worthwhile thing to attend. Please do. We, 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 would, we would love to have you over. We'll work on it. All right, we will. I'm sure we'll work on it offline. Thank you so much. Thank you everybody Thank for joining. You. Oh, by the way, House Africa is here. House Africa happens to be one of the startups that have gone through Startup South. Um, they were an alumna from the last year's, last year's event. Um, they're creating something interesting. Um, they're creating something interesting to help democratize real estate investment. Um, so so they're, they're going to be helping people invest in real estate in chunks, own, own real estate and trade in, their, in real estate shares in chunks of with as little as 10,000 naira, you can own stakes in real estate and you can earn, you can earn from rent for life or you decide to fling or sell your shares. So that's one of, that's one of the startups um, from last year's event. Um, and and their hand now is here. I think Indifreka introduced himself earlier. Excellent, great to have you all here. All right, thank you everybody for coming. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. So see, talk to you, talk to you later. All right then. Bye, Jay. Bye bye.